like, oh, he, ha ha. But funny. it was not it was not the right time. I yeah. didn't know anything about anything, but I did know that it's time to get serious now. So mm -hmm. I got a second job. I worked two jobs for a while until my parents told me to quit because they were like, you can't work two jobs and be pregnant. Um, so my parents were a big part of how I was raised and the environment that I was in. And they are always very, very supportive which is why I'm allowed to change my mind because they support me changing my mind. I change my mind all the time and they're kind of like, well, that's what you want to do. Go ahead. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I've never been, I've never felt like there was nothing, there was anything that I couldn't do. I feel like I can do yeah. anything I put my mind to because that's how they raised me to be and feel and execute. So I did retail for a little bit. Retail does not pay enough. Mm -hmm. Then I got into banking. So for me, I feel like once I got into banking, I'm like, okay like this 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 is my sweet spot um I don't know how many of you watched don't tell mom the babysitter's dead but great Llewellyn, she gave me life I feel like I'm trying to be in the office with my own office and just moving up through the ranks starting mm -hmm. young and then working my way up um and that's honestly just what I've been doing so I've held, held different positions in the bank uh for me even though I work at a bank, I suck at math. I suck at numbers. It is not it is not my thing at all. So eventually moving around, I am really, really good with words. So reading, understanding, comprehension, hence why I'm in compliance. I can read the regulation and tell you exactly how we need to execute. And also, I don't want to be the doer. So <clears throat> I don't want to be, I guess... I don't want to use jargon, but first line, I don't, I don't want to be mm -hmm. in a business that is the front facing end of the bank, which they are the ones who do the work. I want mm -hmm. to be on the back end saying, uh, this is what the government is saying that we need to be doing. So how can we get there? Or this is what you're doing. Here is where the discrepancy is. Mm -hmm. I don't want to look at nobody's balance sheet. I don't want to tell you how many capital assets we have. Like, I don't want to talk about infusions, ratios, none of it. It's it's not yeah. me. But I feel like in doing that and being able to change so much as a child and what I wanted to do, it's allowed me as an adult to not to be comfortable with bouncing around. And there was a point in time, and I know Toya kind of mentioned it earlier, um, about like changing industries. And for me, I never really wanted to change industries, but it took a while for me to figure out which role was best suited for me. Mm -hmm. And I think that there was a good while where like every year I was like, yep, new job, new job, new job. And everyone was like, why are you moving so much? Because why not? Why, why can't I? Why, why can I not? I should be able to move around until I find what works best. And then once you have that, you, you you can manipulate the landscape a lot better. So I think the best thing that I never had was, no, I didn't ultimately get to be a teacher, but I know that I can move around and do different things. Um, and then from the aspect of being able to help children, I think that the flexibility that I have in being in banking, I can go to the kid's school and be mm -hmm. a field trip mom. Right. Because those are things that are important to me to be able to show up for the kids all the time. Um, I can do the volunteer activities that we have at work. I absolutely love when we volunteer at the high schools and we teach kids about financial education and how we can show them mentorship. And honestly, there's no better feeling than going into the school and the kids being like, I didn't even know there were that many black people mm -hmm. in banking. Mm -hmm. Or when you tell someone that you work at the bank, everyone automatically assumes that you're, you're a, a teller. teller. Yeah. 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 Yep. That you're a yep. teller. And when you can go in and show them, no, there are so many more things yeah. that make the bank run. That's fulfilling for me. So no, I don't get to teach them in the classroom, but now right. I see what the classroom looks like. I don't know that I would want to. All I can right. teach them more about what they actually need to navigate life. And I think yep. that for me, that's what's most important. Right. That's, that's so bound. That's so bound. Like, and, and it's the same thing, like with, with what Jen and I both said is like, you know, the heart part, the under part that yep. we aren't push to tap into is still there and you're still able to fulfill it fun mm -hmm. fact because I totally skipped over my banking experience but I worked in banking too oh, for a little okay. bit 
I fucking yeah. hated it. Yeah. I don't know why y'all love it. Um, <laughs> what are you doing though? It might like, depend on what you're I'm doing. I'm gonna tell you. All right. So when I, I like I said, like I, I my bachelor's was in criminal justice, and then I kind of I had my son, so I knew I couldn't go to law school right away. So then I started my paralegal certificate um, to be able to move into the legal field. And I was like, all right, you know, when he gets a little older, then I'll go to law school. But then, Mm -hmm. you know, other parts of life happened and the whole boy factor, (laughs) whatever. (laughs) No, say it, say it. I don't even know boy. I wish you could like, see him. I don't even know boy. Only way people know I know boy is if they follow him and they follow me. Be like, oh my God, those kids match. No, we don't beef. <laughs> we don't beef. You're right. We don't beef. He's okay. He's fine. But anyway, <laughs> my ex-husband is a great man. Whatever. No, but I was in banking for a little bit. Um, I worked for, I don't even, this, this bank still exists. Yeah, in our area. Um. PNC and I started as a teller um and then but I was going taking my paralegal classes at night but my son was still small so I'm like nursing and trying to head over so much. <laughs> to these classes it was a lot y'all um and then I transitioned into being an fi- a fight the the job title was a f- financial advisor and I was like y'all goofy because what <laughs> <laughs> what am I advising folks to do <laughs> But it happened very quickly because I had been at the bank maybe at that point for like three and a half months. And they just transitioned me to a, a different branch. And that was my job title. And I was like, but what am I telling people? In all actuality, it was more of a sales job. It right. was trying to, you know, pull people into having this bank be their primary focus. Yes. And since since the branch I was at was located inside of a supermarket, it was like, you know, you get the foot traffic and blah, blah, blah. But I'm... I don't sell nobody nothing. No, you want it, you or, want you it don't. or not. Like, that's it. Nah. Like, you see what it is. It's dope or it's not. Keep it pushing. <laughs> <laughs> so that was when that was when I was like, all right, this isn't for me. And I finished I was finishing up my paralegal certificate. And then I had applied for that my first master's in criminology. And that's when I transitioned to social services. And with that, I was just like, I gotta get out of that because it's not for me. And I, I'm not smiling in no one's face. I'm not gonna tell you. Like you could read, agree. This, these are the things that we offer. I can't sprinkle it or sparkle it any other way, bro. Right. Like I don't know. Um, so it was fine. I had a short. So we all have banking experience, and I'm glad y'all love it. But it wasn't for me. Yeah, but like all. you said, we had to find like, and what Shanice said also. We I just get a lot of find what you're good at. Yeah, right. And I was like, what? Like I was like Shanice, I, and what, you told me I only had to be here a year. Cool, I'm gonna be in this position for a year. And then I'm gonna keep going, and I'm gonna keep going. And then there was layoffs in between, you know, in banking or whatever. And then yeah. you know, that's how you find a different yep. department, or you find a different company. Because I can do and, anything for a year. Yeah, I can do anything for a year. It's like you tell me I'm getting out of jail tomorrow. Oh, so I only got 24 hours to have to deal with this, Jennifer. Okay, cool. Yes, look. I don't know why I to jail. Jen, I'm trying to know. This is not really about that. Like, <laughs> Je- like, I'm like not. every episode, Jen be like, jail, jail, that's, jail. That's, you know jail. That's, to me, that is like the worst thing that you can be. This is kind of like jail, being stuck and not being able to do something. I don't think well, jail gonna... would be the worst thing to be. Like, I think. What? I think. I, okay. All right. Have I you ever been up my PD and I watch a lot of, you know, scared straight and stuff like that? I don't want nobody yelling at me because right, that... you're right. I'm not about that life because now I don't want to be nobody's bitch. I don't want to be nobody's nothing. Okay. I'm just, I'm not about that life. And I feel like jail is scary. I don't like being in the house as it is right now. And I can free roam about. So <laughs> I want to know what's worse than jail. Scared. Right. Dead? Prisoner no, of no, war? Not the real, I don't realize Like. <laughs> Physical imprisonment is actually terrible, yes. But emotional imprisonment is just as bad. Being in situations where you still feel confined can be synonymous to jail. Very true. I've experienced that. We can we can definitely so then, then we can just stop talking about jail then. Cause if you <laughs> I don't know. I'm just <laughs> you, saying it. You'll be scaring the shit out of me. She'll be like, cause jail. Right, anyway. Yeah. Episode yeah. eight, jail. Yeah. Yep. Still not in jail. Why? Because that is a goal in life. That's the best thing I never, well, that ain't the best thing. I ain't never had jail and I don't want jail and I'm living everything. I'm doing everything possible because shoot, again, having a kid young, there were things I could have did to end up in jail, but I'm scared of jail. So guess what, Toya? Jail, 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 jail. <laughs> my closest, my closest experience with jail, with jail was when I had 
a night and I ended up being arrested for disorderly conduct, disorderly conduct. And I was in a holding cell and I, I cried the whole ride over to that motherfucker. I cried the whole time I was there until my mom and stepdad came to pick me up. I cried in the car home. <laughs> I cried for like three days. <laughs> and then it was like, it was literally like, it was while I was in undergrad. So I'm like, I'm never going to be able to be an attorney. I just- <laughs> <laughs> I'm crying like a bitch. I had to go. I had to go to the hearing. And the good thing about it is my advisor and anybody, anybody who went to my undergrad school, and I have a lot of friends who were in the same program as me and had this man as our advisor. He is the most amazing man. He spent like over three decades as um a state trooper and mm-hmm. then he um got his phd in criminology or criminal mm-hmm. justice and then he started teaching and we all love him to this day. like oh my god like whenever you anybody says his name he was like yeah he's the man he wrote the best letter he was like this woman has a bright future <laughs> he was like can we chalk it up to just being one night of adolescent indiscretion like he was, oh he was all, and he was like he was like um damn I, I didn't gave too much, but he said my my last name. He's like he always called everybody by their last name, Mister mm-hmm. or Mrs. He gave us so much respect, and he's a, a white man. And he would say, you know, Miss such and such. Um, you know, I didn't say that any of those things just to say it or for fluff. He was like, I believe in you, and we're gonna do this, and you're gonna you're gonna finish everything one time. I was like, yo, thanks. <laughs> my college sent me to anger management i wasn't even angry what happened Wait, was... i got threatened to get sent to anger management too mm. but that was a di- it wasn't college it, it wasn't was a the, threat it was, it was a part it was yeah. a part of Mm-mm. yeah, oh, yeah I'm never listen <laughs> let me tell you let me so, i was like what did this happen oh yeah when i when i tell my children the one time mommy got arrested they were like what <laughs> i know let me tell you what had happened your father <laughs> <laughs> Because we went to the same, we went to the same college together, which was silly. And our parents, our parents advised against it, like you know, high school sweethearts. Y'all probably should spend some time apart. I was like, well, this is where I'm going. He was like, well, that's where I'm going too. Listen, they were the the elders were smart, and that's they're always so, smart about that. Here I go. The story happened. Your father plus vodka. Yep. <laughs> and that's Man. that's why I don't your father Man. or vodka yeah. now. Anyhow. Wow. wow. <laughs> He's a great man. If anybody, <laughs> if anybody runs across him, he's a great guy. But I was a young girl, and it was a mess. And th- that's my closest experience with jail. So, yeah, I understand whenever you point to it. No, I cried for, like, four days. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I would have cried. I would have cried. I was, yeah, I was a good girl for a long time. And then niggas went to jail. Look at you. I was in the bad girls club. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> I didn't get a mugshot, so it really wasn't for real. For oh, real. it don't count. Oh. It wasn't a. It wasn't official. You went to baby jail. You went into timeout. That's all yeah, that was. That is. I was told you I was in a holding cell, and my you my went mom, to a stern timeout. My mom and my stepdad drove up there, and I was just like, "Hi," <laughs> and that's all I would have needed. That's enough to right. me straight. Wait, your parents said that you can call them. Oh, my parents told me if I get locked up, don't call them. I don't so. know nobody else's phone number. <laughs> Toya and Shanice. <laughs> I was about to Tomorrow. say, first of all, I'm going to come. Second of all, I'm bringing Stacy. Because- <laughs> and then let me hide out at your house because I can't go over there. No. I feel like that's something my parents would try. Actually, no, they, they've they never said that because they know it's they bullshit. They know I'm yeah. coming. They, they come in. No matter what time of day, no matter what happens, I'm mm-hmm. calling you. You come in. Don't even play with me. You have a great relationship with your parents. You, When you talk about your parents, it really sounds like you're the only child, but it's a lot of y'all. Well, not a lot of y'all, but it's more than one. It's like three of y'all, Only right? one counts. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, God. I feel I like, sorry. As soon as, as soon as you started talking, I'm like, oh, oh we, we doing that. Not I, feel, do that. I feel sorry for the sibs, but, but you really be like, my parents, and you talk like an only child. Like, you do. Like, they will do anything for you. And that's so bomb. Like, I have a completely different relationship. Like, I'll be like, I'm an orphan. And it's fine. <laughs> Even though, you know, she a cheer room. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Teenage years, it was a little rough. Sometimes you, I think. You, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she and I used to have to write jail letters to each other. See, there's jail again, but it was real life. That was, I still out. have the letters. I'm about to Me put too. it. I'm about to do a throwback Thursday on Instagram with the letters. Jesus. <laughs> Shanice is more. 